Hello, everybody. Welcome to Star Talks, the series here on Daily Magazine, Romania. Today, we have this amazing actress. Her name is Macarena Gomez, and I am more than happy to introduce you to her. She is an outstanding actress, and let's get to know her better. Hi, Macarena. Welcome to Star Talks from Daily Magazine. First of all, thank you for being here and agreeing to do this interview and for me to get to know you a little bit better. You want to know more about me? Yes, of course. <laughs> Today, I'm really sick because I was at Sitges Film Festival and I had to present like three different movies and I got sick because like it was sunny and then it was cloudy and now I'm very, very sick. Well, um, I don't know what to say. I, I live here in the countryside. I'm very happy to live in the countryside with my animals. If I see animals around, I will show you. But there are no one <laughs> around me. And well, I don't know what to say. I I love acting. Uh... <laughs> well, let me tell. Let me say something about you, Macarena. Here, she's she's being very humble right now. She's she's an amazing actress. She's been through some of the most challenging roles that it goes from horror movies, short films, theater plays. And she has received many prizes uh, in her long-standing career. And because of that, I want to ask you, what has the industry taught you about and what has it given to you? Um, I learned that, well, it gave me happiness. I feel I am a very happy person. I feel that. Uh, I do what I really want to do in life and I can make a living out of my acting. You know, it's like I just act. I don't have to do any other thing. Well, now I'm producing because I love producing, but it's not that I have the need, like economical need to produce. I do it because I love it. Okay. And what I learned or what it, um, I don't know, it's, um, I learned that for being a successful actor, you have to work a lot. Uh -huh. Work a lot. <laughs> Sometimes that's, I think that's why I'm sick also, you know, because <laughs> like one said to me, why do you go to sitches? You don't have the need to go. You don't have the need to talk to everyone and be nice to everyone. But I love it. I like it. I, I like talking to people. I like going to film festivals. I like doing all kind of movies. I don't mind. It's like in in Sitges Film Festival. Do you know Sitges uh -huh. Film Festival? Yeah, yeah. Um, I had one movie and two short films. And people would tell me, why do you do short films, Macarena? You don't have the need. And I say, well, I love doing them. I love working as an actor. So I, I like telling stories. So why not? And so that's what I'm trying to say is that I think I I'm successful or I work a lot because I work a lot. You know what I mean? <laughs> like, I uh, work, you... work cause. If you work, someone sees you working and doing a job, mm. it doesn't mean that you are doing a short film or you are doing like a tiny role in a movie. But if you do a good job, someone will see you and someone will uh, hire you for the next project. So I think that's very important to be always active. Of course, I feel like if you if you just wait for roles to land in your lap, it's not going to no. happen. You have to be there to work. And sometimes people don't see that it's hard work. They just feel like, oh my God, it's just acting. Yeah, what a great life. It's not that. I mean, it's, it's, it's more than that. I feel like when you act and when you do any type of roles, you just put a part of yourself into that role. So it can be exhausting. It can be, you know, very stressful, very, it's a hard work, I feel. Yeah, it's not only about people think that being an actress is having fun, going to shows, dressing up nicely, going to film festivals. No, it's more than that. It's like um, studying about the role. Like, for mm -hmm. example, if I play like a psychopath, 
I have to, I phone my friends who are doctors or psychiatrists. I meet them, they explain me. So I have to do a research, a very deep research. And I have to research, I have to study, I have to, for me, the most difficult thing is like, when I work, I'm away from my family, uh -huh. you know? Uh, when I was younger, I kind of, I didn't mind. But when I have, I'm married and I have a kid. And now every time I have to leave my family, I suffer a lot. <laughs> and that's, that's hard. Yeah. What do you think is the current status of art and cinematography? Do you feel like there's a trend going on? Do you follow trends in general when it's about art and cinematography and films and movies and roles? But do you mean in general or in Spain? In in general. If I follow, I feel like, way. for example, I feel like I, I saw many shows on Netflix at a, a month ago. A lot of Korean shows popped up in, on my screen. So, and I saw a lot of actresses from Europe playing in Korean uh, movies. I see a lot of Spanish popping up on my screen. So I feel like we, I can call this a trend. You know, do do you believe in those? What's your opinion on that? I wished um, they are uh, like uh, I was hired to play my Korean TV series because I <laughs> I wish I was too. I'm not an actress, but I want to. Love them so much. Just I saw the Squid Game because my kid uh -huh. is old, but he loves like scary movies. So we saw the Squid Game like a, a month ago. We saw um, Train to Busan. We saw every, oh, everyone is dead. You know, it's like we love Korean movies. I wish someone hired me to play in a Korean movie. I don't know. Trends, like trends. You say trends, right? Mm -hmm. Trends. Trends. Uh, you have to jump on them. You have to not to jump. You have to follow the trends. If not, you you are away from the world, you know what I mean? <laughs> like, I mean, working. What I try to say is like, if now it's very trendy to watch Korean movies, you don't have to watch them yes. only because it's trendy. I mean, I love them. I love them, so I watch them, you know? And for example, I also love all the stories that have to do with... Um, like assassins, you know, and killers and things like that, because that's the kind of genre I love. So I follow the trends. But for example, I don't like uh, romance. I don't like um, cartoons. I don't like Disney movies. So I don't watch them. But but if they ask me to play, like not a Disney, but a, a, I don't like, for example, movies for kids. Mm -hmm. I never liked when, when I was younger. But if they ask me to play, I do it. Why? Because I know my kid is going to be very happy very watching happy. me. <laughs> but I feel it's also a personal challenge, right? To play something that you don't watch, that you, you're not fond of. I think it's, it's yeah. challenging to it's, yeah, it takes I, you out of your comfort zone, which is nice. Yeah, I have to, like, when they ask me to play something I've never done before, I have to a lot of research, watch movies, try to understand the, um, the atmosphere or the the tone of the movie. But that's that's fun. That's what yeah. You have I, I feel it's, it it helps you evolve in your in your you know career and as an actress. Speaking of actors and careers, and what do you think should be the meaning of an actor or an actress for or in the current society? The meaning? Yeah. I don't, to tell you the truth, probably you are not going to agree with me, but um, I don't think I'm here to give a lesson to anyone mm -hmm. or to, um, yeah, to give a lesson. I'm just here to have fun and to make people enjoy watching me. I don't, I don't, I don't, choose the roles for what they mean uh -huh. you know what I mean? or i don't choose a story for the for what the story has to say okay 
do I do you understand? And I'm not an actress who ever does gives any political or moral uh lesson. I don't like that. To give moral lessons, I have my kid and I tell him what he should or he shouldn't do, you know. But I just want people, I just like the entertainment industry. And when I say when I said to you I don't choose roles for what if they have like something to say it's like for example if I had to play obviously I don't judge my characters as an actress you could never never judge your characters so if I'm asked to play like a murderer mm -hmm. I would play a murderer you know and I don't judge the murderer. I would do it. Even if me, even if Macarena is against the way the murderer thinks. You know what I mean? Yeah. If I, if I have to play like, um, uh, if I had to play Hitler, I would play Hitler. You know what I mean? Yeah. It's like, I, I know, I know because it is like um, learning things about other people and uh, telling stories and being another character, but I don't judge the character. If I had to judge all the characters I had played so far, I wouldn't have played what I've done. I wouldn't have done what I, I wouldn't have, I, I, I wouldn't have the career I have so far because mm -hmm. I normally play a prostitute, a drug addict, and a and murderer. Um, yeah. I always play the the how do you say verdugo the the opposite of victim the you have the victim the and abuser? the how do you say abuser yeah I always play the abuser <laughs> so it's like you know what I mean it's like if I had to judge all the characters I play I would never yeah. I so feel some like... some actors and actresses they only play a specific part for example I don't know if I see a movie that that has Anne Hathaway in it I know who she's kind of gonna play it's predictive or if I see a movie that has I don't know uh, anyone I can I can kind of predict his or her role in the movie which sometimes get, get boring I mean you know makes yeah, sense but you mean that she doesn't want to play all the roles or she's not offered other roles. I, don't, I don't think that she doesn't want to maybe she's she's not offered or maybe she feels comfortable playing in a certain role so you know i mean uh, uh it's very it's very easy to feel comfortable if you feel comfortable yeah. playing role, you know you are going to do that role well yeah and you know that's cool but um I, I don't mind uh, getting it wrong. I don't mind doing a bad job. I mean, if sometimes, I mean, when, when I when I act and when I see myself, I know if I like myself or I don't, you know? I say, hi, Macarena, what did you do here? Oh, but I don't mind learning from my mistakes. Mm. That's why. <laughs> Speaking about roles, you, as I was saying, you are currently playing Blanca on the new Netflix show. Sagrada Familia, and I wanted to ask you, what does this role represent for you? What have you borrowed from her personality and what have you given to the role? Do you make a change? Sometimes you exchange experiences, personalities, character traits with the roles you play? I don't think um, Blanca has anything to do with me. Physically, it does. Okay. Physically, when I see Blanca, I see my mother. <laughs> <laughs> like the way she moves, the way she touch her head, the way she says hello to everybody. You know, she's very like refined person. And I was like, oh, she looks like my mom. <laughs> and, um, but I don't think I have nothing to do with Blanca at all. I'm not, I'm not worried. I don't think... I worry about appearances, you mm. know? It's, I'm not the kind of person who inside my house, I play a role and outside play a different role, no. Mm. So I am who you see now. 
I am. This, this is me. I don't. I hope you're I not all the time sick. <laughs> Sorry. I hope you are not all the time sick. No, no, oh my God. <laughs> so as a mother, is very, very, very. It's very different from me. Uh -huh. It was. God, I cannot tell you things, but it's like, I don't know if people see Netflix, but uh, the TV show, but uh, she, uh, Blanca looks for perfection, perfection, uh -huh. the perfect family, the perfect song, son, but she doesn't have it. And she suffers a lot from that. And I, me, I don't want to have the perfect family. I love my son. Obviously, obviously, I think he's the best in the world. But I, I know his um, the thoughts you say. I know his all his. I I accept all his uh, mistakes, and I accept the way he is. You know. So I'm not like Blanca at all. I feel like chasing the perfect family. It's something that we will never get because you know in trying to have a perfect family i think you are imposing some rules you you have a lot of expectation from sons from daughters you know it's very hard to have a perfect family i think the perfect family is just the way it is just let it be itself you know if you have a kid just be yourself as long as you you know you're being a good person and a kind one but be yourself because that's that's what makes you perfect and unique yeah, and nowadays, what is a perfect family? Yeah, so it's, I don't think it I has have, a meaning. I have friends who are married, very happily married, have three kids. They all have jobs at home. They earn money. Their kids go to go to school, and they seem to be like a perfect family. But from the inside, you know. Yeah. No, they they from outside they look like oh a perfect family. Nice. In Spanish you say you don't know que se cuece dentro. Mm -hmm. What is cooking inside? What's baking inside? Yeah, what's cooking? What's going? <laughs> yeah, it's hard, but you know. Do you consider the role of uh, and symbol of a family in its true meaning has remained intact over time? And do you feel that you made any sacrifice for your family? me a yeah. lot and i feel like um, my parents have made a lot of sacrifices for me i mean i always say my parents had doctors so thank god and i always lived very well you know and my parents could pay for me to go to study to the best places but I decided to study away from home like when i was 16 and i remember for my parents that was like uh very difficult you know having a kid who is 16 years old and letting her go to the states for a year and i studied abroad so um in a way i left home when i was 16 because i wanted to be an actress and i think nowadays in, in those days i'm 44 it was like oh my god my kid is leaving home very early you know and um I know they were very sad, but they knew it was the best for me. And also, uh, my, my my parents, I mean, they're old. They're like almost 80 and they still work. You know what I mean? And my, my, that's always, my, my mom always has always said that I work for the day I die. I want you and your brother and sister have a better life, you know? Mm -hmm. I know this seems a bit selfish because, as I said, I never had like I always had a nice life but what I mean also is that my parents always keep working and working so the day they die they will die in comfort thinking that I will have a good life as they did you know what I mean yeah and also I mean making sacrifices is something very easy I mean it's like I remember my mom getting up with me at five in the morning helping me to study because I have an exam do you know, do you think every parent get up at five in the morning to study with their no. kids for their, no, my mom did it. My mom um, still does it. <laughs> so, 
you know, it's not we get up at five in the morning, but if I know I have to to prepare a role or and I didn't have time, she gets up early in the morning and she studies and then she tells me things, you know what I mean? And or or it's like me. I for me the biggest sacrifice is having to leave my kid to go work. So I go work, sometimes I get up also at five in the morning, I get a train, go to Madrid work and then get back at nine in the evening you know and those but at the end of the day I don't think that's a sacrifice I do it because I love my kid and I think that's what I think that's what a mother should do yeah well as long as the you kid know? is happy and she doesn't you feel know? that she's missing you it's okay and do you know what I'm doing now and you are gonna think people are going to think that I'm crazy I have my my sister-in-law Mm -hmm. she's, she's 16 and I love her very much and she has to do like an essay an essay for the end uh, for the for school right mm -hmm. yeah. and I'm so worried about her essay because I didn't like what she did <laughs> that I get up at 6 in the morning <laughs> to correct the essay for her you know uh. Now I feel like she's like my little daughter, like a daughter for me, and I want to help her. I think I'm a bit crazy, anyways. I feel like helping the ones that are close to you, I think it's a nice trait. It's a nice uh, character you have, which is good. But because sometimes, you know, nowadays, it's I feel like it's so hard to be nice to someone because you always think that, oh my God, I'm going to be nice to someone and they're going to disappoint me. Why do I do it? You know, I feel like we live in a society where everything is based on exchanging something, which is not something bad, but this exchange, the waiting, it can get you, can get you disappointed. You know, so it's, it's, it's nice to be kind and don't expect but anything in return. I know what you mean, but if you always act that way, you wouldn't be a happy person. Ah, it's like... Yeah. I, I'm not going to do this for her because she's not going to do it back for me. If Okay, you get disappointed. I've been disappointed many, many, many times in my life, but that does not stop me from doing something that I really feel like yeah. doing, you know? I'm the same. I've always told my friend, do whatever you want. And if you disappoint me, that's fine. It's a lesson learned. I know how to handle you next time. I know what to do next time. So I feel like every disappointed disappointment that I get, it's a value lesson to, to learn about myself and the others. But you have to think that the other person doesn't think he's disappointing you. Yeah, that's, that's a problem. Why. Yeah, that's the problem. And, but sometimes it's good because that's, sometimes I learn, but sometimes the other one learns as well. You know, I feel like... I, you... uh, in general, I think that people are very selfish. And when you're yeah. a selfish person, you don't, you are not aware that you are being selfish. Yeah, and the problem is when somebody points it out, oh my God, <laughs> it gets nasty. <laughs> that way, I don't think, I think people are selfish, but they don't know they are selfish. Yeah. You were saying earlier that when you, you were a kid, you, you went away to study abroad. And I feel like nowadays, in today's time, this happens very often in, in families. What do you think is one of the things the reasons that how do you do you manage to keep connected to each other with opportunities flying around us all the time like i also left school when i was young you know and it was so hard to keep in touch with my family i i remember i didn't do it that much but i, I write <laughs> writing <Yeah. letters. laughs> those letters but um, I don't know, nowadays, everyone travels, you have Instagram, you have your phone, you have, I mean, <laughs> the life has changed, life has changed so much. It's like, oh, it's crazy. It's crazy how it has changed. I feel old now <laughs> when I'm with my kid that he knows how to turn Netflix better than me, you know, how to, how to, he, he knows how, he's better than me. Yeah. Like using computers and the remote mm -hmm. thing. 
it's they, they are so smarter than we used to be <laughs> that's what i always say yeah uh, talking about change and do, do you think that the role of cinemas as in places will be slowly taken on by the online platform what do you think is the future of cinematography in your opinion Oof. Look, I remember, you know, the director, Alex de la Iglesia, mm -hmm. I've worked with times. I remember, like, when he was a director of the Spanish um, equivalent to the Goyas, to the Academy, like, the Cinema Academy, he mm -hmm. said, because now everyone is, wa is going to watch uh, movies in internet, cinemas, uh, are going to disappear and everyone is like are you crazy what are you saying and actually he had to <coughs> renounce as a director for what he said you know as a president of the academy but I mean he was so right he was so right he said he said the future is in the platform and mm -hmm. he was so right and I don't it's not the future, it's the present. And um, I don't know what is going to happen with the, with, the, with the cinemas, actually, because I think they will stay, but obviously the amount, many of them had to close or they will have to reinvent. Mm -hmm. and do some, they are reinventing, but do something to attract people. Because seriously, it's much easier it's terrible, but I'm an actress, and I say that, but it's much easier to stay at home and see a movie with your kids or your husband or your wife or whatever. And the whole family can watch the movie. You can press pause to go to the toilet. You can press pause to go and have a glass of water, you know? So in a way, it's easier to watch them at home. For me, it's easier because I live in the countryside, so I have to travel like 40 minutes to go to the movies, but to go to a cinema. But on the other, on the other hand, it's not the same watching a movie on your TV at home than going to see it in a big screen on the yeah. cinema. I think the cinemas will stay, but they will, they will have to invent. I can't wait for a cinema with uh, holograms inside a movie made out of holograms i think that would be nice <laughs> i haven't oh, been to the cinema in two years and a half uh well because of the pandemic but not just that i live in austria and i don't speak german and everything here is in german even the cinema so if i go to the cinema i'll be like mm, what and they don't they don't have great they don't have english subtitles no, they don't have they have some cinemas with english subtitles but they are small and you know I, i'd rather watch it on my tv at home yeah yeah i have a personal question now for you we've talked about your work and your career and i'm so happy that i've got to know many things about you but i want to ask you what makes you happy in life in your real life i i love working <laughs> when I said, I'll say, when I work, I'm very happy. Seriously. Every time I get, and when I get up in the morning and I know that I have to go to work to like to play a role, I'm extremely huh? happy. I don't mind if I have to get up at six in the morning. I don't mind. I'm extremely happy. I'm very happy also with my kid. Every time I learn, every time. I discover something new from him, you know? Every time he tells me something, I go, wow. So how, how would I say? Uh, sus pequeños. His little discoveries in life mm -hmm. makes me, yeah, you know? And um, I don't know. Uh, in general, I'm, I'm, I'm happy. I'm happy talking to you. I, I, I mean, I'm happy doing that. <laughs> I don't know. I love traveling also. It's what I like the most in the world. Traveling, traveling, traveling. Traveling, it's amazing. Especially if you go to places that you discover new things, you meet new people. I love to get to 
uh, to places where I haven't been, or even if I was there, I try to go to part of the cities or places where I, I haven't been just to discover the culture, the way that people live, you know, to interact with, with something different. And sometimes I was, so many times I was so shocked that I never thought about anything about what they were doing. I was like, wow. And it made sense, you know? Yeah, it, 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 it makes me, I think if I had not been an actress, I would have loved to, to study uh, like, well, I studied also art history, but I would have loved to 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 like work as a uh, historian, art 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 teacher. You know, not to work, but what I'm trying to say is like I love traveling. I love discovering, like as you said, new cultures, uh, visiting museums, visiting like a a, a church, a a a castle visiting Roman ruin, ruins or like Arabian ruins. I love I love it because every time I travel and I see like different architecture, I love uh I love I love to imagine how the life would have been in those days, you know? Yeah. And I play a character, like a princess who lived in that castle or um I don't know, uh, Roman slave, you know, who lived like in uh, maybe Syria. Uh, so I love uh, making movies in my in my head when I travel and I visit places. What uh, what advice would you give to to young people or somebody who wants to start a career as an actor or an actress? I always tell them that lack is important, but I don't feel that I'm, I was a lucky person. I just felt that I worked a lot. <laughs> um, that you have to work a lot. It's like, um, it's a and you have, you have to train. You know, it's like sometimes you see these 18, 19 years old actors who said, no, I was in a school, but I saw an advert saying that they wanted kids for a casting for a TV series. So I did a casting and they took me in. And then, I'm, yeah, but are you studying to be an actor? No, no, I'm not because I'm working. I say, no, no, it's so important to study because when you study, you learn things, you learn other techniques. Yeah. You know. So I think it's to be an actor, you have to study, get, um, learn, learn techniques, and also work a lot and get a lot of experience. And people could say, how am I going to work in no one hires me well i know that's true sometimes no one hires you but when i say work is every time you have the opportunity you take it uh -huh. like for example I, I remember years ago i used to tell my friends maybe 10 years ago look this director phoned me called me for a movie but i cannot do it do you wanna do you wanna play my role? It's a, like it's no budget movie. It's for free. Oh no, I would never work for free. Oh no, if I have to take the bus every morning to go to work, I wouldn't do it. And you say, well, you are losing a big opportunity because yeah. you never know. You never know. So when I say work, I mean that kind of work. Uh -huh. Doing things that are like a bit of a pain in the ass or maybe you don't like the script or you think the director is not good or you or you have no money to go shooting but you always learn something and you get experience of course i feel like you need to put a lot of work in otherwise it's you I, like i said before you can't wait for roles to pop in your in your lap you just have to go there and work even if it's a free role it's not free. Okay, you don't get the money out of it, but you get something more valuable than money. You get experience. You get to meet people. You get to networking. So. Exactly. Through experience, then you will learn a lot. You will be a better And then you will make the money. <laughs> and they will hire you and you will make money. True. 
Thank you so much, Macarena, for being with me here today. I loved talking to you. Okay, you are welcome. And I really hope to see you soon someday, maybe at a, a festival or, you know, to meet you for a coffee next time. I will see you and maybe talk in person. You are, wh where are you? Romania? I am from Romania, yeah, but I live in Vienna. Ah, uh, you are in Vienna, okay, good. Mm -hmm. Okay, okay. Kisses to everybody. Come to Vienna. <laughs> they say they have the best I, coffee, but it's not true. I don't think it's true. Just that with my mom. Okay. Yeah. Thank you so go. much. Have a nice bye -bye. day. Bye.